My name is Emily Sullivan Smith. I'm an assistant professor of foundations at the University of Dayton, and the show is called The Plate of Abundance. And the impetus for the work was really thinking about um, instances of massive amounts of abundance in the natural world and how human um, behaviors or conveniences, anything like that, has sort of changed the path of a, a specific species. So one of the pieces, the first one that was made in the series is called The Plight of the Passenger Pigeon. And in doing research about them, found that the swarms of passenger pigeons would take three days to pass over a land mass and that you could feel the wind off of their wings and things like that. Um, and then they were hunted basically to extinction. So the piece really looks at giving a visual example of all of that abundance, but also showing the human hand at the same time. Um, in tandem with the animals. So each of the works touches on that idea in a slightly different way. Uh, there's a piece made completely out of post-consumer plastics that really is looking at, um, you know, discussing in sort of a non-confrontational way with the viewer the things that we find convenient in the world around us, the ways that we're using plastics, and then in my mind sort of experimenting or thinking about this out of sight, out of mind mentality, like what happens with the pink Barbie brush after um, your child's done using it, you know, really where does that go? And there's a lot of research being done right now about um, the effects of these ocean plastics. It's in the news all the time. So my objective as an artist isn't really to confront the viewer in um, any sort of harsh way, but really to get them to interact visually with the work and start asking themselves questions about their own lives to just sort of present the question in front of them, um, giving them at the same time an aesthetic experience. But I think that for me, this is important work to be doing right now when we're in this time when, you know, global warming is a major question and electric cars versus petroleum um, is a major question. We're, we're really at this impasse um, in the world culture to thinking about what our responsibility is for preserving the environment for the long run. So uh, through the body of work I've gone historically, then through to contemporary, of uh, looking at how our actions and our choices have really affected the natural world. I've, I've really looked specifically at, at places where there was so much of something where you couldn't imagine it going away, or that something was so prevalent in your daily life that you didn't think about it being a problem. So. The piece that's behind me is really looking at the American bison, and this was an animal that was so prevalent that it seemed as though we could use them and use them and use them, and they would never go away, and they were hunted almost to extinction, but the image is taken from a historic photograph of this pile of bison skulls that had been slaughtered, um, and what I've taken out with magic Photoshop is the, the gentleman standing on top of the pile. But it's really this massive amount of animals. Um, and to be, to be proud of that, to have that human action be like, look at what we conquered. We sort of conquered and um, sort of squashed the natural world. But what are the consequences on the back end of that? So it's really looking at that perception of the human perception. That's where the notion of collection comes from. But in all honesty, I think that the work that I've been making my entire professional career has had something to do with massive amounts of, of things and really um, uh, giving the viewer this sort of magical visual experience at the same time where they are able to be captivated hopefully or surrounded by something in such mass quantity that they can be kind of visually transported. Yeah, I'm really excited about the work in this space. Um, it's a really intimate, beautiful, clean space here at Blue House. And I'm excited about um, the work being shown in tandem instead of it all being spread out together that you can kind of see a grouping of works together um, that we're using the beam above that's generally would be an unused space. We have a beehive kind of hidden up in the ceiling as well. Uh, I think it's interesting to see all of this work together in such a small space sort of be able to take it all in visually at once and to have all of that abundance really sort of doubled up on itself in a space like this. Um, Nick and Ashley have been amazing. This is my first year in Dayton. I just moved down here from the Akron area. Uh, Nick was one of the adjuncts that was hired at UD this year and was very welcoming. Ashley has been incredible. They've been so helpful getting the work together and answering all of my questions as we've gone along and 
you know, I'm really excited about this space, this sort of experimental space that's for artists, run by artists. You know, I think this whole idea is really interesting and important for the art scene in Dayton, that it's um, sort of outside of the establishment a little bit. Um, kind of interesting, exciting to be a part of.